Hello everyone, I welcome you all to today's uh, session wherein we will be discussing time and work again and this is second concept video of time and work topic. In the previous video we have discussed how do we quantify the work, what do we mean by unitary work, right? unitary method, what is the non-unitary method and then we sort of try to clarify which is the better method, right? unitary approach or non-unitary approach. Generally non-unitary is better I said but there are some questions last class, last video we solved one example also wherein we saw that the unitary approach was far better approach than non-unitary approach also. So, thus we cannot say really uh, clearly in black and white which is better which is not. Right. Now let us continue with today's uh, session. So, time uh, brings to you all these videos all right. We are trying to cover this concept series all right from various topics. So, for even deeper understanding please go visit a time center near you right wherever you are watching the video from right uh, and please check out the courses that we offer. Now if you are interested in going for MBA right uh, manage if you want to do a course in management then we are the national leaders for the MBA test prep particularly the CAT examination right. So, we will definitely be able to serve you right in that direction. Let us get started with the class. So, time and work is a topic. So, in today's class the areas that I would like to cover are so basically we will be taking it up in the form of uh, question discussion only majorly because whatever theory I want to cover is uh, via this questions itself right. So, let us get started with the very first question for today. Read it, try it out yourself, watch the screen, try it out and then listen to the discussion that we will be having. I will be solving anyways here. So, it says Atul can complete a piece of work in 9 days more than the time taken by Atul and Rohit together and Rohit takes 25 days more than time taken by them together. So, Atul takes 9 days more, Rohit takes 25 days more. In how many days can Atul complete the work and then also one more question, Rohit's efficiency is what percentage more than or less than right more than or less than Atul's efficiency. Look at this please. So, if I assume the total time taken by them together, so time taken by Atul and Rohit together, if I take it as t days, so can I say time taken by Atul will be 9 days more and time taken by Rohit will be 25 days more. 25 days more. Now notice, I will go for unitary approach, let us assume the total work to be one unit then last class also we have seen that if time taken by A is A days, B is B days, so together they are going to take A into B by A plus B number of days. Here also time taken by A is this much, time taken by Rohit is this much, together will be can I say product of the two by sum of the two. So, when you add them 2t plus 34. So, this should be equal to what? We have assumed it to be t. So, when you simplify t square plus 9t plus 25t plus 9 into 25 is uh, 225. Cross multiply you will get 2t square 34t and on both sides if you notice 34t cancels out. So, thus can I say 2t square minus t square which is t square is 225, hence the value of t is known as root 225 which happens to be 15. So, that means Atul and Rohit can complete the work in 15 days. So, if this t is 15 days, what was the question? In how many days can Atul complete the work? My answer is time taken by Atul is nothing but t plus 9, 15 plus 9 is 24 days. 24 days. Second question, Rohit's efficiency is what percentage more than or less than Atul's efficiency? Notice, what is time taken by A we got? 24. Time taken by Rohit is 15 plus 25 is 40. Now, if Rohit is taking 40 days, Atul is taking 24 days, so can I say work done by Atul in one day, which is nothing but the efficiency is 1 by 24. And work done by Rohit in one day, Rohit's efficiency is 1 by 40. Let us find the ratio. So, what is Atul's efficiency to Rohit's efficiency? It is 1 by 24. 
to 1 by 40 when you solve this throughout multiply by what is the LCM 120 let us say. So, it will be 5 is to 3. So, the ratio of efficiency turns out to be 5 is to 3. Now, who is more efficient? Atul's efficiency is 5 units, Rohit is 3 units. So, can I, can I clearly see Rohit is less efficient than less efficient than Atul? So, he is asking us by what percentage? So, can I say my answer will be for second part 3 is less than 5 by how much? So, it is less than 5 by 2. Comparison is with respect to what? 5. So, thus my answer is 2 fifth in percentage which happens to be 40 percent. So, 40 percent is the answer for the second part, 24 days will be the answer for the first part. Now, there is a shortcut that I would like to share. Whenever in competitive exams, CAT or ZAT or any other competitive exam, if you come across a question like this, wherein you notice that time taken by A and B together is T, time taken by A is A days more than the time taken together, time taken by B is B days more than the time taken together. In all such cases, time taken by them working together which is T is simply equal to root A into B. Now, just, just see if you apply this formula here, we would have got our answer without going for all these steps. Observe, what is A here? 9, 9 days T plus A. What is B here? 25. So, what is the value of T directly? It is root over 9 into 25, which is nothing but root 9 is 3 into 5, which is 15 days. We directly get this 15. Instead of going for all these steps here, we can directly get this 15 by noting down that formula, right, by using that formula. I hope that formula is clear. Please make a note of that. Let us look at this question. This is a question from heterogeneous groups, all right, different efficiencies. So, read it, try it out once yourself. So, when you look at this question, please note that we are talking about two different groups like group of men, group of women. Whenever we say group of men, we assume that each man has the same efficiency. Similarly, group of women, each woman has the same efficiency. But we cannot really say that each man and woman will have the same efficiency also. We cannot claim that. So, thus, let us start with the assumption that each man's efficiency is M, each woman's efficiency is W. So, if I make this as efficiency assumptions, so can I say this group is 3 men plus 4 women and this combined efficiency of men and women are able to complete a certain work in 12 days. So, thus can I say total work will be equal to this. Now, second information, a group of 4 men and 7 women can complete the same work in 8 days. So, this will also be total work, same total work. So, if both are equal to same total work, we can also equate these two. Let us do that. So, when you equate 4 goes 3 times, 4 goes 2 times, 3 into 3, 9 men, 12 women will be equal to 8 men, 14 women. So, men comes on the other side, 9 men minus 8 m is 1 m, 14 minus 12 is 2 w. So, 1 man will be equal to 2 women. So, if I assume women's efficiency as 1 unit per day, man's efficiency will be 2 units per day. So, based on this, what will be total work? Total work can either be this or this. Let us use the first one. So, it is going to be 3 men, 4 women into 12 days. So, when you solve this, you will get it as 120 units. You will get it as 120 units. Total work is this much. Now, look at the question. A group of two men and four women. This group can complete the same work, 120 units in how many days? Look at this. Two men will be how much? Two men will be 2 into 2, combined efficiency. Four women will be 4 into 1. So, 2 into 2, 4 plus 4 is 8 units per day, combined efficiency. What is the total work to be done? 120. Hence, can I say my answer, number of days will be total work to be done by combined efficiency, which is... 15 days. So, thus my answer is 15 days for this question. All right. So, this is a question which deals with different set of groups, right. So, whenever you have different groups, this is how we go about solving it. So, the formula that we are using here is total work is nothing but efficiency into time. 
combined efficiency into number of days. Next, let us look at this. So, this on pipes and system, the topic is pipes and system, right. So, whenever you have question on pipes and system, there are few things that we need to understand. The filling pipe, of course, is the one which fills up the tank and the emptying pipe is the one which empties. Now, filling pipe can be anywhere. It could be at the top of the tank, it could be at the bottom of the tank, it could be anywhere. It would be doing the job at the same efficiency. It would be doing the job of filling up the tank as usual. But if the emptying tap is at the bottom of the tank, then it can empty the entire tank. Whereas, if the emptying tap is here on the top of the tank, then it cannot empty the entire tank. For example, water level lying under it, it cannot disturb it. It can only take care of the water level above it. So, that means placement of the emptying tap matters. Filling tap does not really matter. That is one thing that we need to understand here. Let us read this question. Two taps A and B are fitted to a tank. A and B can fill a tank, fill the tank in 12 hours and B in 18 hours. Arvind turns on the tap at 8 am when the tank was empty. He goes back to turn off the taps when the tank was supposed to be full. When was it supposed to be full? So, A takes 12 hours, B takes 18 hours. So, together they will be able to complete the work in unitary approach. 12 into 18 by 12 plus 18, 6 goes 3 times, 6 goes 5 times. 36 by 5 hours, which is nothing but 7 1 by 5 of an hour. So, when was this support to be, supposed to be filled? At this time, which is what? 8 am plus 7 1 by 5 is 7 hours and 12 minutes. So, what is this? If you look at it, it is 3 12, uh, it is 2 am or pm, just, just a minute. It was 8 am, sorry, 8 am, somewhere it was given 8 am. 8 am. So, it will be 3 12 pm. So, 3 12 pm it was supposed to be full, but what happened? And notice that only 80 percent of the tank was filled. This was due to a leakage at the bottom of the tank. In how many hours can this leakage empty a full tank? Now, please notice. Now, during the 7 1 by 5 hours, can I say the leakage, leakage was also active? So, ideally what should have happened in 7 1 by 5 hours, both these taps should have been in a position to fill up the entire tank. But it is given to us that not 100 percent tank, but only 80 percent tank was full. That means what? Can I say the 20 percent water in the tank was emptied during the 7 1 by 5 hours? By whom? By the leakage. I hope the point is clear. In this 7 1 by 5 hours, the leakage was able to empty. 20 percent of the tank. If it wants to empty 100 percent tank, full tank, so can I say it will take 5 times this, which is nothing but 36 hours. This was the question. So, in how many hours can the leakage empty the full tank? My answer should be 36 hours. I hope we are clear with this question. All right. So, this is how you deal with questions on pipes and systems. There are plenty of more questions, more examples, but this is the one that I found to be really, really uh, learning wise really helpful. So, I picked this up, all right. So, but please do practice more and more questions from this topic also, pipes and systems also. So, with this, uh, we have come to the end of the video today here, right. So, would like to uh, thank you all, but again, just this one small reminder, right. For more such concepts, please uh, subscribe to our channel, right? Share it in your uh, friend circle, right? Amongst your friends, family, right? Whosoever you think will be benefited by these videos, right? Uh, on that note, let me end the session here. Thank you and all the very best.